Lately I've been feeling things change We've been working hard, no sleep, get it every day And I swear that we ain't stopping till we pay Yeah, the pressure on, gotta make it work, triple play, yeah This is, this is Triple Play Fantasy Basketball. Week 17, people. Week 16, basically in the books here on a Sunday afternoon, as we typically do. We're trying to prep you up for week 17. Um, I'm Coach James Lewis. On the other end, Doc Middleson. What up? Coach, ending your season soon, so I will want to hear an update at the end. But the listeners, I sure want to know an update of me and you because we're facing head-to-head. It's been a little bit of a back-and-forth all week. Got a slight advantage, six to five in categories, as James is scratching his face right now, knowing this might be the nail in the coffin of his postseason chances. But no one cares about week 16 result. They care about who's holding a banner at the end of the year, which you have yet to do. And um, in the past two playoffs, I think it was me who, who sent you home packing. So I, I can see why you're so eager for this week 16 matchup that's currently 6-5. You didn't even beat me last year. You just <laughs> wish you beat me last year, okay? Uh-huh. All right. Um, and if you would have ended the season, which normal people do as a commissioner, you know you don't wait till the last week. It's like the last, oh, let's, let's end our uh, fantasy uh, football season week 17. Yeah, that's a great idea, commish. That's what it would have been back-to-back. That's what most people do, James. Gosh. Most people do not do that, no. You're, not, you're not sane – commissioners you don't hold to the last week well People. i'll agree i'm not sane but i'll i'll stay true i'm a good commissioner a lot of basketball being played um this week and the wizards have been in- entertainingly i guess bad um from just a home perspective watching them blow leads and lose to teams without their best players a la katie and Kyrie. but with that grant's opportunity um, people are sitting out because they may be requesting trades and teams might be showcasing players um, to put out there as the trade deadline looms this week. So next week's show is going to be all about the moves and what players are going to benefit. Uh, but for this week currently, there's one team with two games. That's the Pelicans, 20 teams with three and a lucky nine teams with four games. So the Pels uh, get to rest a little bit and if you're an owner i mean we're going to tell you to pick up a pelican um but just keep in mind that he might want to just put him on the radar and that is larry nance jr he's 48 percent rostered but he's been rebounding a ball at a high level and him and Valanciunas have kind of been splitting back and forth with minutes and production unfortunately for your Jonas owners out there like myself uh, Tari Eason is catching fire as of late. He's rebounding the hell out of the ball as well. Cam Thomas going bananas with Kyrie out. Chris Boucher is doing a safety watch with his 24 minutes. We wish he played more so that he would be more fantasy relevant. We'll see what the trade deadline um, helps that out with the Raptors being one of the hot teams as far as maybe making moves. Isaiah Hardenstein, we haven't seen you since week one, um, but I think they're finally letting him play a little bit. And Denny Osvia. Uh, who since Rui Hachimura has left, uh, he's been consistent uh, fantasy production in a 12-team league. So we'll start off with two-game Larry. Yes, Larry only has two games, but he's power forward center eligible, 38% rostered. He'll probably be available sometime next week since people won't be too inclined to pick him up this week with two games. Um, but last week, 10 points, 11 boards, 1.5 assists. Uh, his defensive stats aren't there, but we know that in the past he's been able to get a lot of steals. What's your opinion on Larry Nance Jr.? Yeah, and it, it, James, he's out of the steals court. He's averaging .9 for the season. You can't average less than a steal and be in the steals court. Yeah, he's out of there. No, he's no. out. He's not out. With, we 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 voted him out. Not this with teammate actually, Herb Jones getting all his steals now. Yeah, yeah. And shout, shout out the guy Herb Jones. First five minutes of the podcast. Larry Nance has been giving you a little bit more scoring, and and one of the things that I think is really underrated about him is. He shoots a great percentage from the field, 61% for the season, 65% in the last two weeks. He's someone that I wish got a little more playing time, but it probably is good because he seems very injury prone and he's been hovering in the mid twenties. But I mean, those rebounding numbers are great. And Valanciunas got hurt yesterday. So I know they do have two games coming up, but just something to monitor moving forward. 
And how about uh, Herb Jones taking on the LeBron James assignment yesterday? He only had four points, but he had just as many steals. He had four steals. Um, he has a plus seven for the game. And although he played, he played 40 minutes. I mean, um, so Herb Jones might not statistically wow you outside of steals. Um, he's a damn good basketball player for winning formats. Uh, scary, Tari, Eason, um, everybody's favorite preseason player uh, as the last two weeks has been playing damn good basketball. And here he is, 48% rostered, which means you can find him in 52% of leagues. 13 points, eight boards, a steal, a block. You like somebody that's getting you two-plus stocks. It's it's kind of rare with a one-and-one one, um, against OKC. Everybody's favorite opponent. He had 20 points, 13 boards, two blocks, three steals. That's five stocks. And against Detroit, 16, 10, and two steals. What you like about Tari Eason? So finally getting a little bit more playing time, Coach, and that's what we love. Um the Rockets are going nowhere, though, and so that that does have a catch twenty two where he's going to get more playing time. You know, especially if they ship out KJ Martin. I got to be honest, though, I'm a little worried about the long term growth of him, and I know he's just a rookie, but the Rockets are a dysfunctional organization, man. Like, c- coaching isn't good. Somebody pointed this out on Twitter minutes after they lose by I think thirty two at OKC. Jalen Green goes on Instagram and posts his outfit for the game. And we've heard rumblings before that Houston just doesn't really seem like they care about winning basketball now. That it's just about their stats. And so you Bro, just hope- they're in for Wimby. Yeah, they're not trying to win right now. And yeah, their Steven Silas is just a temporary coach. But what, what are we talking about? They have there's a generational talent out there. Tank and go get yourself Wimby. Then you come back next year and we'll see. We'll see how that they look then as far as at winning least is at least act like you care though at least act like it come on um kj martin by the way he's 40 percent rostered out there and he's been balling as of late um so he's still somebody that you could grab out there um alperin shangun has a has an awesome second year um, Dog, it's they're very gonna fun they're to gonna watch him he's he reminds me a little bit of sabonis in some of the like like ways that he is with the DHOs and his back against the basket and his ability to just kind of be crafty around the hoop. Um, I like me some Alperen Shangun. It, it, it's funny that you do mention Jalen Green. I don't really trust him yet as a leader, but I mean, what is he? He's not even legal to drink. So we'll see. He's boundless with talent. I still think that he's going to be a future all star down the line. So maybe Victor Wimbignana with his winning, winning mindset. That's the piece that puts everything together. I mean, I can only imagine with him and Tyrese Eason running around together. It's oh, I'm sorry, Jabari I'm sorry, Smith. I'm sorry, James. I didn't realize that you rigged the lottery and already assumed Houston got the first pick. I'm I mean, sorry. they're like they. I mean, what are we talking about? Four teams that have the highest percentage chance to get them. They're in there. So it's not a given. It's not a given, but like you got to try when you're that bad. And if, and if they get and if they get number two and they get Scoot Henderson, like that's the last thing they need is another guard that just can score. I I think they'd take a hard look at um, Amin Thompson if they're in that position. I really this do. Is a chan- this is a chance to plug your uh, NBA draft video. <laughs> later. I I don't know if Scoot Henderson is guaranteed number two because. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he's the best pairing for a Jalen Green. I don't know. It it would be hard to pass up on him. But Amon Amen Thompson is such a great athlete, and he brings um, a lot of intangibles that I could see fit with that team. Um, we'll move on um, to Oak Hill's leading scorer all time, Cam Thomas. Um, if you like basketball, you love watching a good Cam Thomas highlight tape. Um, and he went for 44 last night against Washington. I watched all of that. 44, six board, five assists, which has to be a career high because we know he doesn't, he's infectious to not passing the basketball. He hit four threes um, and against LA two games prior, he had 21. And in the game in between, he had 19. He's had at least 19 in the last three. Kyrie's out for trade demand issues. I'm ben sure that's out with his back, you know, re, just re flaring up. KD out. He's going to yeah. have the volume. He's a bucket getter supreme. This won't last too long because you know how he just falls out of rotation. But right now, um, he's worth a pickup. Are you for the sure? Or if, if, if the Nets make a lot of moves and decide to tank and just 
trying they're to not, get some assets I back? I don't see it. I see him actually. This I mean, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I see him holding tight. Don't trade him. Don't do it. This guy, this is our last opportunity. I'm holding tight. I'm what are you gonna get in return? That's fair. That's fair. Right up, just play. You gotta play. Sorry, Kyrie. And then they'll see him walk. But when he was healthy with KD, they we saw them win 19 out of 21. So that that'll give you the chance, especially with Kevin Durant coming back in the fold. Just ride it out one one last time and then see what it's looking like in the offseason. I don't know. That's my take. I don't see him getting traded. That's fair. Um Isaiah Hartenstein, 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 excuse me, uh, 39% rostered in the last week, 10 points, 11 boards, and a steal and a block. I think it's funny how he gets more steals than blocks. Um, but that's like, those that's are like guards. That, that's like guards that get more rebounds than assists, a center that gets more steals than blocks. <laughs> and you love mentioning that. Uh, he doesn't wow you. Um, it's kind of, he's kind of, a dry a little bit uh, fantasy wise, but he's somebody that you don't feel bad about dropping. Like I said, he's not going to win you a week, but you could, you could maybe stream it for a little bit. I I'm out of the Hardenstein. Like I'm not riding that bus. He's, at all. He's, he's a rosterable player in 10 to 12 man leagues. I'd rather go with the other guys that we had mentioned. He's not like the lowest guy in my I mean, he, my he'll, list. He'll, he'll give you good rebounds. Three straight games of double digit rebounds, and it's not like Mitchell Robinson's the epitome of being healthy either. Yeah, well, we know he's out for the foreseeable future. Give me Denny though. Give me Denny. Last two weeks, fifteen points, eight boards, two dimes, hitting the three, nearly two steals. Um, and with you know, I'm not having to worry about Rui. He had already won that job because he's a better basketball player. Not having to worry about Rui behind his shoulder. Uh, Denny is uh, fits really well with this Wizards team, and he's going to get you some fiery stats. They they Give had a Denny. clip they had a clip that came out that said he hasn't had a teammate sit, uh, that he's gotten along with like Porzingis since like he was a teenager, and he's like it makes me want to play that much harder. And I think now that he is getting the opportunity, that I mean, look, he's only twenty two years old, so. Look at, those, look at those look at those stats recently. Like last night, he was balling out against he, Brooklyn with 23 points. He had four steals and hit. Don't sleep on him. He's a good defensive player. James, I've been watching a little bit more Wizards games, and, and I gotta give him his flowers. My Jewish brother. Shout out. Anyone that didn't know before, Doc is Jewish. <laughs> and hence when um the holiday season, I'm wishing them a Merry Christmas and I just backtrack a little bit there. Um, all right, pick up candidates question mark. Uh, Boucher, we've seen him before, he's still teetering on that 24 minutes per game is like his cap on the minutes. Him and Precious, uh, Achua kind of split those. Uh, but the Raptors are one of the teams that have been getting talked about as far as maybe they make a move, maybe they send OG and Minomi and try to get a, a ransom in return. I don't recommend them sending Siakam anywhere, but. Fan fleet's been talked about. Gary Trent Jr., who's on an expiring contract that needs to get paid. We'll see what happens, and we'll see if that means opportunity will arise or what. Maybe, shoot, maybe he'll be thrown in in one of these deals. Um, but somebody to watch because when he does play, he hits threes and he gets blocks, and then he gets points and rebounds, and that makes him in categories leads a good player when he actually gets minutes. Yeah, and he's someone. I mean, he's six nine, but he he plays power forward and center. Like he's he's a good real life basketball player. He's I, I would never say he's a starter, but he's like a good six seventh man off the bench that does a lot of things that you need. You know, picks boxing out, setting picks. Like you said, can stretch the floor with a three. Well, and just something is not working with Toronto, so they're gonna have to mix it up a little bit. Now, Nas Reed. Um, when he, I don't know, he has giant games and then other games where it's not as wild. Well. So, so like Golden State, when he drops 24, 13, four assists and two stocks, it's like, oh, that's really cool. But some of those games in between, you'll get like 10 and four, and, you know, get played off the court. So, um, somebody watch, somebody not, I mean, I've picked up and I've had to drop before 18% roster, but somebody that should be on that when, when you hit that little star, he's on your watch list. Agreed. And kind of like the thing we said about Boucher, Nasri can hit the three. He has two in each of the last two games. It just seems like it's so matchup dependent on, on yeah. if he does well or if he doesn't. Um, Kenrick Williams, 
small four power forward eligible is getting those kind of those poku minutes. Um, but in and really in like the last two weeks, he's only eight percent rostered. It's been like 10 points, seven boards, um, getting some steals. Uh, he had a nine, seven rebound, seven assist game against Dallas. Um, so I don't know. I'm not picking him up, but I don't, I, don't have much to, I don't have much to add, but like James, it's another week. It's another Oklahoma City player. Like I'm trying to tell you, this is like clockwork. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, Malachi Branham, um, the last two games, 26 points against Philly, 22 against Sacramento. Um, is he going to take over this uh, starting shooting guard spot with Devin Vassell out? I don't know, but if he's playing minutes and scoring buckets like that, he's worth a watch and somebody that really came on the scene last year for Ohio State and the former St. Vincent, St. Mary product. Oh, yeah, LeBron's about to break the record, by the way. Is, I didn't know that. We didn't get to mention LeBron yet, but St. Vincent, St. Mary ties. He's going to break it. I mean, Actually, he he's already broken it. He's already broken it. If you got to add up his playoff totals, I don't know why this regular season thing so big. He then broke the record if you count those playoff games. God, you're such Thank a LeBron you. stan. It hurts. Thank you. Yeah, James, you want to know my favorite thing about Malachi Branham? What is it? It's that he's a spur we're talking about. That's not Jeremy Sohan, who right hey. now is out, who is out with a back injury. So that might be why we've seen Mr. Branham getting minutes the last two games, 32 and 35, and he's making the most of it, shooting 20 of 39 from the field. That's over 50%, giving you eight assists in those two games. So, hey. With the the one thing about the Spurs, we don't know about their rotations. Like they they play guys and then they sit them. We've seen that with Zach Collins and Doug McDermott, Josh Richardson, Romeo Langford. They're kind of like a watered down Thunder, but they'd have no reason to not play him after he's balled out the last couple games. Only nineteen years old. And Trenton Wofford, uh, who had himself a game against Washington, and personally, when I was watching, he was the difference maker. Power forward center eligible. We see him get hot a you little not bit. Not watch Anthony Simons that game. Anthony Simons was the difference maker. <laughs> All right, but you expect him to drop buckets, I guess. You know, Wofford came in and had been playing too much. Your reasoning, James. Um, excuse me. I'm sorry, Anthony Simons. That's rostered in 85 percent, 90 percent, 99 percent of leagues, and is a baller. Uh, I didn't get to mention him. Okay, yeah, he went off. But, hey, I want to ask you on this since this is our last guy. Um, would you consider trading him? Trendon Watford? No. <laughs> I mean, he's going to be thrown in the deal if you need to. But I'm I'm talking about Anthony Simons. Portland should do something here in the trade deadline. And he's valuable commodity. We've seen how good Shaden Sharp is. Is he the future two guard? Um, so so you, here's can get, the, you can maybe get some value for a guy like Simons. Here, here's the thing. You have to realize you're never going to win it all with Dame as the centerpiece. Because right now he just makes way too much money. And Portland hasn't done well with trading over the years. Like they, they, got, they got pebbles back for that CJ McCollum deal. So but I disagree with that. That, I mean, I, I, how they're currently constructed, I'll agree that they aren't a championship contending team but i don't think like you can't win a championship with a damian lillard i don't think i know it's, it's not it that but it's 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 the fact that he makes too much money now and they don't have assets to build a championship level team around him well every it's, superstar makes the max so like you i mean you're able to do like curry, curry makes the max and so does thompson and wiggins is highly paid like if, if your owner is willing to go over i mean you could make it like you can, you can make it work, that's, but that's that's know. that's one example, and and the Warriors are constructed very well. I mean, it's a good they, example though, because it's it is a good it, it's it the, is a good example, but it's also a really good system that they're in. It's also a team that has drafted all those players very well as well. Yeah, know, and made savvy moves. So. Here's the thing: I I really do like Amphrey Simons. I think you keep him, but at a certain point, like if Dame is going to be a Portland Trailblazer for life, you have to accept that they're going to be a 500 ish team that will probably make it to the second round of the playoffs as their ceiling. And if that's okay, and you have a generational guy that will go down as the best player in franchise history, then fine. But I don't think that you can say that they'll ever be contenders just the way they're constructed. And and I like Simons. If you could get a good return for him and start getting some assets for the future, yes. You asked me about Zach Levine earlier before the show. Um, would you 
would you throw us like Simons, uh, Nurchich, um, and like a one and try to you know, maybe, yeah, maybe two ones and send it over there to Chicago for a guy like Zach Levine with that? Hell no, level? hell no, what that's worse than my that's that's worse than any take we had last week, James. Oh my gosh, what do you not like about Zach Levine? Zach Levine, uh, been rumors that he's a bad locker room guy. There's a video that comes out where he passes the ball to Patrick Williams, who swings it to Vucevic, who hits a three, and Zach Levine is mad he doesn't get the assist. He has seen fine on Team USA when they won gold, he, and he was starting. He has, that team. he has an insane contract that's making over forty million the next four years, and he needs the ball in his hands to produce. Absolutely not. You're giving up Simons, a young guy, and Shade and Sharp. Or if you get Vooch, you get Vooch too. They say you get Vooch in return as well. Don't Vooch is going to be a free agent after this year, unless you think that you can win it all this year. Well, Absolutely so is, not. So is Jeremy Grant, and like you, do we pay him? Do we pay him a lot? I don't know. There's a lot. I don't know. There's something that Portland. I feel like they could maybe do, but apparently, it's not trade for Zach Levine. No, nah, Zach is that much Zach better. Zach Levine's than him. going anywhere. He's going to Dallas. But we got we got side sidetracked. Trendon Watford, regardless, probably isn't going anywhere. Oh. He's the guy to own. Nurkic is out until after the All Star mm -hmm. break. Drew Eubanks back tightness. Don't get him. Chauncey People. Billups runs a seven eight man rotation. They're the Miami Heat of the West. Shout out Chauncey, one of my f old favorite players. Let's get in in the in the All Star game. Um, that's a disgrace. He's must see TV. And I'm when I think about All Stars, I also that's like kind of the cherry on top. The caveat is like, is it going to be entertaining if this player is playing? He's played every single game and he's led Minnesota to a top six record in the league without no cat. So put, put, let's put Anthony Edwards, who Doc's brother says is the greatest dunker of all time. I digress. It's obviously not true with the likes of Vince Carter. LeBron James is still banging on people. Stop. Oh. That was two LeBron references, James. That's over the threshold. Did you know that LeBron James has only been blocked 11 times on his dunk attempts in his career? Did you know Did you know Jordan Crawford dunked on LeBron James and LeBron had that nope, video? Burned it. No, it never happened. That we don't even, there's no evidence. Sorry. I don't know what you're talking yeah, the, about. The, yeah, the fact that you're defending talking it. About. Yeah, the, the fact about. that you're defending it makes it Let's that you know what happens. I, we don't see the tape. I mean, you can get dunked on, but you have your shot not blocked. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyways, um, we'll move on, and uh, we'll see you next week when all these trades happen, and uh, we'll try to give you a better show then. For Doc, I'm, I'm Jay Lou, um, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Yeah, James oh. James going to give you a better show. I'm always going to bring the entertainment. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, let's plug in some uh, some of the bets. Recently we've been making some um, – some videos of some some prop bets for you to take during the week. So something to look at. Doc, you want to talk about that? No, those are breads. Uh, but okay. check out the YouTube channel if you listen on the podcast feed. We got a lot of great content that comes out there. And just for everybody that watches, likes, subscribes, comments, we really appreciate it. This is why James and I do this. Yeah, and we did a, a trade trade deadline special, one of the like old pod editions. Shout out uh Jonathan Grant for coming on there. We've seen some wild takes. We'll see if any of those come to fruition come this week. All right, we'll see you next week, week 18. Peace.